there are going to be people that are going to come to a situation with you in life that you're going to come across that have resources, that have networks, that have all of these, you know, social capital, whatever it is you want to call it. And But at the end of the day, you know, you bring something to the table as well, whether it be through your hard work, whether it be through your values, whether it be through your emotional intelligence, whether it be through your skills, through your experience. And so I had to understand that even though, I, again, I was coming without those things, that I wasn't coming necessarily without anything. So in terms of you know, a success, I would consider my siblings successful. So my brother, he actually followed my dad into truck driving. You know, he's had businesses, he's bought real estate. I would consider my brother successful by, um, by any measure. And so my sister, she became an accountant. She got her MBA from the University of Pittsburgh. And so, you know, I would consider that, you know, she went down her path as well. And so there's many different ways to define right. success. I mean, right. I'm, we're all in different sectors. Yeah. Um, and I had another sibling um, who had I mentioned um, when we did the pre-interview uh, passed away. He died when he was four years old. And so, um, but I would say amongst my siblings and I, we all were um, held to a standard of hard work and effort. And so, you know, that bore itself out. Yeah. And that positive contribution, right, to society is is what I'm hearing, and that's excellent. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you. Um, success is identified by each person, and you can, definitely can't measure anyone's type of success. And I think that when we're talking about it from our lens is that are you, like Dr. J mentioned, are you contributing in some sort of way to society in a positive way? And that definitely sounds like a super success to me. It sounds like your family dynamic was something that is something that is just pivotal and a lot of people's success. Um, it's amazing the way your story played out. Um, based on what you described in your um, high school experience and moving on to the trajectory of going to college, um, what drew you to that new experience that transition to college was like in your new experience to this new college life and you coming from the area that you're coming from and the challenges of being in a high school and during that time can you please um, give us a, a look into what that was like going to college for the first time it was one of those things and I've had many moments in my life it's like the thing that you want you got and it's like, what do you do with it? Yes. So I remember my mom dropped me off. And this is before, you know, again, for folks that may be younger, this is before September 11th, when you could just walk somebody up to the gate. Exactly. So my mom dropped me off at school. She was flying back from LaGuardia. And I remember I walked her all the way down the jetway before she got on the plane. And I was crying. I was like, oh. And she's like, you wanted this. You wanted this. And, you know, it was really heady for me. I mean, I certainly wouldn't compare myself to some sort of superlative athlete, but, you know, have you ever seen somebody win a championship and they just cry because it's just like, oh my gosh, I've achieved this thing, but, but then there's more, like there's yeah. more that you need to do. So um, at first I was just kind of like, oh my gosh, I made it. Now what do I do? I'm in this city. I don't know anybody. Like, how am I going to navigate this experience? Because, you know, really... High school, you know, ideally intended to prepare you for the academic challenge of college, but there's nothing that prepares you as a young adult mm -hmm. from that moment of, okay, now I'm alone, what do I do? Mm -hmm. And I need to create a new life, a new thing for me in this moment. Now, college is fairly protected, right? Because you're living in a dorm, got a meal plan, like you still have a schedule, mm -hmm. so you're not completely without structure or with boundaries, but it was still pretty heady. So, you know, in terms of making a transition, um, I was fortunate, and this is, this kind of lines up with a lot of people's experience, even my kids' experience um, as undergraduates. You know, you meet a lot of people your first year and, you know, particularly in your dorm, particularly on your floor, because everybody's going through that same experience at that time. And so it becomes kind of a bonding experience. Like I'm homesick, you're homesick, this class is hard. 
um, you know, um, I don't get along with my roommate. I love my roommate. Like, and so and through that kind of experience, you know, good, bad, or indifferent, I don't know if it's necessarily planned. You kind of, at least for me, gradually learned how to find my way. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was a challenge. I came from a school that even though I was in this gifted and talented program, you know, I mean, the, I mean, Columbia was elite then, was elite 200 years before that, and it's still elite today. And so the rigor and the type of students and the schools that they attend with the resources they have was just as intense then as it is now. And so you're going to school with kids that have attended the most elite of elite institutions that have had private tutors, educational consultants, the whole nine to kind of prepare them and support them in this environment. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my parents both graduated high school and, you know, and they supported me and encouraged me to go to college. But, you know, I wasn't coming to school with no private tutors. Mm -hmm. So, um, or anybody to kind of, you know, help me along or write my papers for me. So that was, you know, a thing that I just kind of had to accept that, um, even though I'm not coming necessarily with these assets and resources that other students have, I earned the right to be there. I had the grades, I had the SAT scores, I had the extracurricular activities. And so at a foundational level, I deserve to be there with those other students. However, how I need to approach or how I need to manage my academics may be different because I'm not coming with that background of preparation that they have. Like, you know, many kids, at least in my school, they would make you read like the Iliad or the Odyssey. And some of these kids have read it in Latin. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> that wasn't a book about high school. <laughs> that wasn't a book about high school. <laughs> Neither in Greek nor in Latin. Yeah. So, yeah. or in English. <laughs> so, you know, just getting, coming to accept that there are going to be people that are going to come to a situation with you in life mm -hmm. um, that you're going to come across that have resources that have networks that have all of these you know social capital whatever it is you want to call it and but at the end of the day you know you bring something to the table as well whether it be through your hard work whether it be through your values whether it be through your emotional intelligence whether it be through your skills through your experience and so I had to understand that even though I again I was coming without those things that I wasn't coming at necessarily um, without anything. And so how could I build on the skills and the assets that I do have to kind of navigate that situation as best I could.